Now I'd like to present the combined gas law. It reads P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. This equation applies to one gas sample. under two specific pressure volume temperature conditions. Now you'll see six variables here. In the problem you'll be asked to find one of the variables. So P1, V1, T1 are associated with condition one and P2, V2, T2 associated with condition two. Again, you'll be asked just to find one of these variables. Quite often, in reading the problem, you'll learn that temperature, for example, in condition one and condition two will be the same, or pressure in condition one or condition two will be the same, or even volume in condition one or condition two are the same. So that helps simplify the equation. What I'm trying to explain is that if, for example, pressure in condition one is the same as pressure in condition two, mathematically, they'll cancel out. So you're left with just this equation of two of the variables. And you'll be given one of the four excuse me, you'll be given three of the four and you'll be asked to find the fourth one. A couple important details about this equation. The temperature, very, very important temperature, must be in Kelvin. Must be in Kelvin. The pressure and the volume units of pressure and volume don't matter as long as the, the units are the same for both conditions. For example, if P1 is in the units of atmospheres, then P2 must also be in the units of atmospheres. So the units will cancel out on both sides of the equation. Similarly, with volume. If the volume is in liters, if V1 is in liters, then V2 must be in liters. Now I don't mean to restrict that pressure and volume are restricted to atmospheres and liters. You'll be, you could be given a problem where the pressure is in millimeters of mercury, or in tor, or in psi. As long as both sides of the equation have that same unit, it's okay. Same thing with volume. You could be given a volume in milliliters or microliters. As long as the units serve the same on both sides, it's fine. But this here is very, very important, that you must convert the temperature to Kelvin. I'd like to show you a couple example problems. In this problem, a sample of gas in a 500 mil cylinder is at a pressure of 2.3 and 0 degrees C. What will the pressure of the gas be if the temperature is increased to 37 degrees C? So read that problem again carefully. Think about what are our P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, and T2. Well, Reading the problem carefully again, you'll find that the volume of the gas is the same under both of the pressure and temperature conditions. So the volume cancels out, which is really nice. So now you're left with an equation P1 over T1 is P2 over T2. Now, P1 we could define as 2.3 atmospheres, and T2 
converting our Celsius to Kelvin, is 273 Kelvin. And our P2 is the unknown. And the T2 is 273 plus 37. which is 310 degrees Kelvin. Now, you're all set to plug and chug into the equation. 2.3 over 273 equals P2, our unknown, divided by T2, which is 310. Cross multiplying, 2.3 times 310 is 713, and 273 times P2 is the other cross multiplication. So 310 times 2.3 is 713, and P2 times 273 is 273 P2. Dividing both sides by 273, you get P2, our new pressure, is 2.61 atmospheres. Just as a mental check, because plugging and chugging the numbers is one part of it, I think, but the other part is to give it a mental check and see if you understand it conceptually. Because let's say here's our 500 mil volume. And in the first condition, the pressure is 2.3 atmospheres. And we'll just say that the temperature is cool. Just just as a mental note here, 2.3 atm and it's cool. Then what we do is we heat it up. We increase the uh, temperature. So no longer cool. We're still in the same volume. So intuitively, I would imagine you'd guess that, well, if we're increasing the temperature and the volume staying the same, the pressure should go up. And in fact, that's what our answer shows. Here's a problem I'd like you to try. The gas sample occupies 45.22 liters at 3.22 atmospheres and 30 degrees Kelvin. The gas is compressed to 25 liters and the temperature is lowered to 10 degrees Kelvin. What is the new pressure? So pause the video, try that out, and come back and check your answer. So, my condition one here is 3.22 atmospheres, 45.2 liters, and 30.0 degrees Kelvin. Now, really handy is that they gave you the, the temperature in Kelvin. Condition two, we're looking for our new pressure with these new volume and temperature conditions. Decrease volume and a decreased temperature. And handy again, they gave you the temperature in Kelvin. Substituting all these values in to this equation and solving for P2, I end up with 1.94 atmospheres. Just want to point out, in this problem, unlike the previous problem, none of these variables cancel out. Also, I do want to also point out that the units for pressure are going to be in atmospheres because our initial pressure was given in atmospheres. And when we plug in our volumes, we have to make sure that V1 is in liters and also V2 is in liters.
And of course, we always need to have our temperature in Kelvin.